concept that we are pursuing all started one day with one plant that we found in a Buddhist monastery near the Burmese border. The plant actually is just starting to flower over there in our garden. It was a small golden lotus looking banana species and I had never seen this species before and as I'm a biologist I was quite intrigued about it. And it was so beautiful that we thought maybe there are many more, thousands of people who would find this very beautiful as well. Why do we not start as a concept with, in which we can protect the species, we can grow the species, we can propagate the species and maybe we can even market it worldwide. And as a matter of fact, we succeeded. We sold many of those plants that have been grown by our farmers out to, especially to America and to Europe. And we have definitely saved the species. So with this initial success, we thought maybe we can enlarge the idea. We can include more and more plants. And today we are working with more than 100 species. For those, we design land use systems that we no longer call farming systems. It's land use systems that resemble the original rainforest of the area where we live. And our goal is to reverse the trend of destruction and eventually design uh, systems that look exactly like the old rainforest that has been cut down by logging companies, that has been replaced by rubber plantations, by sugarcane plantations. And we wish to reverse this trend to come back to a rainforest that is actually useful. We gave our company the name Tianze, which is Chinese and means in translation seeds of heaven. Seed as the symbol of initial growth. But for our business model, we needed a new concept because we were so isolated in those uh, southern Chinese mountains that we were quite sure that there would be no customers walking in our door and buy our products. But then through growing our business sustainably and slowly, we soon realized that we need more outlets. So we opened this tea house and restaurant here in Chiang Mai in Thailand. As a biological scientist, I was always interested in biodiversity. So the more you go into remote places, uh, rainforests, rivers, oceans, of course chances are that you once in a while discover a new species. So I discovered new fish species in Philippine rivers. I discovered new ginger species in mountains in China. On a more private note, I would say, the biggest discovery was about myself because after half a century of living, I found my wife in China and I discovered that my love to our children is the strongest force I have ever experienced in my life. One of the special ecosystems we are working with are the tea forests in the mountains of southern Yunnan. This is how tea was produced thousands and thousands of years ago. It was pressed into those cake-like structures with a very clearly defined weight. And as such, they have been sent to the emperor to Beijing as a token from the people from Sichuanbana, the southern part of Yunnan. This is the way that those people found out tea can be transported over very long distances. And what is even better, the longer it stays like this, the better it gets. I guess I had to experience what most people experience before they change their diet. This is, you have to get sick first. And uh, sickness happened to me about five years ago when I got a serious heart problem. After that I still didn't know what I had to change, but it was clear I had to change something. For example, we all know nowadays you should never eat refined sugar. You should avoid all the unhealthy types of long chain oils. You should never use MSG. At the other end where what you should eat come in the vitamins, the fresh vegetables, come in nowadays what we call vitamin F, which are the unsaturated uh, fatty acids, the omega acids. Um, with this knowledge you would already single out specific food that is rich in those. And these are for example nuts, kernels, seeds. Um, with the knowledge about the pesticides that are used in growing agriculture, you would of course exclude practically everything you can buy in a normal store, because you know it is laden with pesticides. 
So we started our own way of growing our own crops, of finding other people who were like-minded, or going to places which were so remote that definitely there was no pesticide use in those areas. And these are nowadays our products. This became the people we work with until today. And we are very proud that nowadays we have a whole series of products from those remote areas that are absolutely free of pesticides, that are grown in natural environments, and our products contribute to the protection of the biodiversity of large lands. Mm -hmm.